This week's Parsha, the last in Sefer Bereshit, Parshat Vaichi, is essentially one long deathbed scene. The death of Yaakov, of Jacob, which marks the end of an era. Jacob puts his affairs in order, so to speak, first making his final request not to be buried in the land of Egypt, then blessing his grandchildren, Ephraim and Menashe, and finally giving each of his sons a personal message. During the medieval and Renaissance periods, it was common for artists to render biblical scenes, especially ones in which death was a central image. The deathbed was often portrayed as a public space, where in addition to family, you might also find attendants and other members of the community. The, the painting on the right like looks more like a shuk than a deathbed. But Rembrandt chose to depict the more intimate moment in this week's Parsha, Jacob's blessing of Ephraim and Menashe. Interestingly, including not only Joseph, but his Egyptian wife, the children's mother, Osnat, who does not appear in the story itself. Rembrandt was known for what has been called visual eavesdropping. The curtains are drawn back, letting us, the viewers, peek into what is otherwise a private, intimate gathering. Rembrandt has also been called the Shakespeare of painting because of the drama and emotion that he expresses, primarily through his famous use of light and shadow. Just as there are countless deathbed scenes in literature and theater, there are in art as well. But there's one artist in particular who was drawn to the deathbed. Norwegian artist, Edvard Munch. Munch led a very tragic life, which greatly influenced his art. He said, my sufferings are part of myself and my art. They're indistinguishable from me and their destruction would destroy my art. Illness, insanity, and death kept watch over my cradle and accompanied me <clears throat> all of my life, he said. His mother died of tuberculosis when he was just five, and nine years later, his favorite older sister died of tuberculosis as well. He said, the illness followed me through all my childhood and youth. The germ of consumption placed its blood red banner victoriously on the white handkerchief. My loved ones, died one by one. In The Dead Mother and Child by Edward Monk, he portrays his mother on her deathbed with relatives all around and the focus being on a young girl in a red dress, holding her ears in disbelief, in grief, possibly sobbing, or screaming. Likewise, he portrayed his sister's death in the painting, Death in the Sick Room, where his sister, Sophie, um, is not in the bed. The bed is empty. Her back is towards us as she's seated in a rocking chair. She's no longer present. She's no longer with them. She's not the focus, but rather the focus is on the mourners. The whole family is in the room, but while they are present, they are separated from each other, each having their own emotional reaction and experience. Finally, in the multiple versions of this painting by the deathbed, Monk situates a figure stretched out facing away from the viewer. Again, the focus isn't on the dead, but on the cluster of mourners crowded by the side of the bed. 
the focus is on the grief of those surrounding the dead, their range of emotions, not only grief, but maybe anger, confusion, disgust, or relief. I specifically wanted to focus on Monk this week because there's been many articles written about how relevant his artwork is today during today's corona crisis since his paintings explore the universal themes of the human condition, including illness, death, grief, anxiety, fear, family, separation, isolation. Monk himself suffered from, but survived, the Spanish flu in 1918, and is one of the few artists who painted explicitly about his experience in these paintings titled Self-Portrait During and After the Spanish Flu. But ironically, in his images of death, while there's grief and anxiety, there's family and community. But in contrast, his images of illness, of his pandemic, are characterized by the illness, not the illness itself, but the isolation and the aloneness in his painting. Monk's most famous painting, The Scream, has become something of an icon for the corona crisis. Um, as it expresses the anxiety and the fear and the confusion of this time. But despite the fact that so much of Monk's art is about death, despair, and darkness, Monk himself explained as follows. I have through my art attempted to understand life and its meaning. My aim has also been to help others understand life. Back to Jacob's deathbed. This last chapter of Genesis is not about death. It's about Jacob's life, his legacy, his past and future. Likewise, the confrontation we're all having today with mortality may cause us to reconsider and reflect on how we understand and live our lives and what we want our own legacies to be. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>